Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. This is the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if you're happy with the content, please drop a like. Let's welcome who's on the stream here, Bull Runner. 76, welcome. We have Oxford, UK. Maro G, welcome. Elijah, Jojo, Ali from London. Silent Sandal is here. Jojo Wave, Oxford, UK. Right? HP Supreme Crypto says, hit the like button. Okay. We have Jay is here. Denmark, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Peru, Greensboro, North Carolina. Megan from Boston, welcome. Charlie is also here, right? <laughs> AAM says, there's something out there. It's the Loch Ness Monster. Well, there's something out there. And the good news is, whatever it is, everybody who watches this will be ready for it. And if it doesn't happen, well, that's awesome. You know, the market's going up and I work for a crypto company, so that's great. But... This is where we protect you, okay? Uh, yes, uh, JP Morgan today supported Bitcoin. Yes, is that bullish or bearish? Ooh, I don't know. Go Celtics, Houston, right? Caleb says, I liquidated all over myself. I like, that's funny, all right? Let's help everybody so that it's not a train wreck, right? Davenport, Iowa, Turkey, Rodrigo is here. Welcome. Okay. Red Sox are on fire. Southern California is here, right? More Celtic fans. Welcome. Okay. What are we going to do today? Well, let's start out with maybe a little bit of crypto news. How about that? Crypto news items. Okay, so A16Z, a highly reputable and highly profitable venture capitalist in the crypto space today, announced a $4.5 billion fund because they're going to double down on Web3 amid the market crash. Okay, so really smart people want to buy it when it's down. Okay, I get that. Once upon a time in 1929, John D. Rockefeller said, I am going to buy Standard Oil of New Jersey and I am not going to let it go below 50. Why am I telling you that? Well, sometimes really smart people, right? They come in and they know it's going to go up long term. They see that it's down. It looks cheap like Rockefeller did in 1929. It looks cheap and they step in. So what does that do? Well, they can get involved. It creates a headline that supports the market, right? It supports the market and these guys know, you know, they're not stupid. Web3 is going to be the big thing and they want to gobble up everything when it's down. Now, when are they going to do that? Are they going to do it today? Or are they going to wait for further wreckage for the four and a half billion? So this is constructive for the crypto space. No one ever said on this show, crypto is going away. What we're saying on this show is you may get crypto at Uber discounted prices, which I'm guessing, guessing is what they're getting ready for, right? Hopefully they don't rush in all at once, but somebody is waiting down there. So there's two lessons. One, people see this you know, a little bit like Rockefeller way back when, and they go, oh, everything is okay. 
It doesn't mean everything is okay. It means these guys are ready to do value investing. Okay, the Bitcoin outlook. JP Morgan backs Bitcoin and it says it will rise 28% 28, 28 and crypto is now a preferred alternative asset. Well, that would have been a really great headline in May of mm, 2020. <laughs> These guys are a little late and I thought Jamie Dimon hated Bitcoin or did he like it? I can't remember. He goes back and forth. Okay. So sometimes investment banks, when stocks are going down, the research department doesn't have anything to say. So what do you say that's popular? Well, you say crypto's popular because, you know, people go, oh, okay. JP Morgan likes it. Everything must be okay. And my comment in crypto very simply is, since when are we listening to investment banks? Yikes. Okay. So I like that they like it. I like Bitcoin too. The question is what price you want to get it at. All right. Now, Terra Luna. Okay. So here's a Twitter thread. Uh, Terra 2.0 is coming with overwhelming support. The Terra ecosystem has voted to pass a proposal calling for the genesis of a new blockchain and the preservation of our community. So they got 8,779 likes as of May 25th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, I don't know how much Luna is up, but these guys at least are trying to keep Luna in the headlines. They're trying to keep hope alive. And I hope for the sake of the people that lost money that these guys are able to figure it out and recover. However, I will also mind you that hope is not a tactic. Right, that comes from the army. Now, on a slightly more positive note, right? Ray Dalio, who is uh, like the original big hedge fund guy, who by the way never bought any Bitcoin, okay, on the way up, is now saying Bitcoin is like the new digital gold and is you know kind of like a reserve safe haven asset. And he's right. The question is, what price does he want to buy it at? Okay. He didn't tell you that. He just told you that Bitcoin was the new digital gold. We'll talk about the relationship with between Bitcoin and gold in a minute. But it is good that, you know, Ray Dalio, JP Morgan, and A16Z are all putting out positive crypto headlines. That's good. Okay. It's good for the future of crypto. However, what about the present of crypto? One thing you have to be careful of from prior market events, 1929, 2008, is everyone sitting around going, you know, everything is okay. Everything is all right. We're all going to make it. We are all going to make it if we don't get wrecked. These guys know how to protect themselves from a downdraft, especially Dalio. So it's good for crypto in the future, which is why I want you to have capital ready to deploy if it goes up now or if it goes down a lot and then we can buy it super cheap, okay? So that is the crypto news of the day. Let us know if you like that kind of segment in the comments below. Now, let's go to your market update. Let's go to your market update. The prayer of the sheepdog. What's that? I'll tell you at the end. Okay, gold over Bitcoin. So take gold, divide it by the price of Bitcoin. Destroyed, right? Bitcoin went way up. Gold did nothing over the last five years, 10 years, really. So there's this saying for any long time listeners, the bigger the base, the higher into space. I read a tweet today that said, based on certain mathematics of on physical gold and the value of the ruble, that gold should actually be trading at like $2,800 an ounce. Be careful that gold doesn't just turn around and moon. 
or Bitcoin could go down suddenly while gold holds its value. Whatever this is, either gold is going to go up a lot and Bitcoin's going to go up a little, or gold could hold its value as Bitcoin goes down. But it looks like gold is getting ready to perhaps go up versus Bitcoin. Why am I telling you this? Well, if you wanted to hold a portfolio and you don't want to hold stable coins or you don't want to be in cash and you at least want to take a shot that something might go up, but you don't want to lose half your money, okay? Gold, not investment advice, might be something to look at. Let's go to Bitcoin, okay? So I'm looking at this and this is Glassnode data. We talked about it yesterday and I consolidated the story. So the little red histograms are Bitcoin miner net position change. So normally miners sell as the market goes up and that makes sense, right? You're like a miner, you mine, you get some Bitcoin. Oh, look, it goes up. Oh, my cost of production was 4K. Oh, look, it's at 60. Let's sell. That's what this is right here, right? Now, miners don't normally sell into a downdraft, right? So the market is down and miners are unloading. The last time I remember that was 2018, okay? They unloaded once, that's this arrow. That was right after the top. Then they unloaded again, right? Then they unloaded a small, like the third time, but not much because they were a little hesitant when it was around seven or eight or 6K. And then something happened with minor cost of production. Okay, Bitcoin actually went below the cost of production for most miners and they were all forced to liquidate. Now, is that going to happen again today? I don't know. But miners are headed for the door. And miners, you can consider them smart money. Speaking of smart money, open interest in Bitcoin futures is making higher highs as Bitcoin makes lower lows. Now, yes, Bitcoin is in a range, but technical analysis textbook page 50 will tell you if open interest is expanding in the direction of a trend, it bodes for the trend to continue. So the market's going down and open interest is going up. That means people believe in the downtrend and they're betting on. It. So you could have macro hedge funds and big players shorting Bitcoin or the likes of Michael Saylor hedging, right? Now, if you have Bitcoin in a confined space, if you have a market in a confined space and open interest expands, when the instrument is in a confined space, that's the market going, wind it up, wind it up, wind it up. And when it finally breaks out, it goes. Something to consider because this stuff is as clear as a bell. Miners are selling and open interest is expanding, which means hedgers or short sellers are out there. Bitcoin on a four hour chart. Okay. We've got a DeMarc level at 28,357. So that's below the recent low. So you may see, you know, I can see a heave to 28,350, 28,350, and then a ramp up higher as the final squeeze in front of the June event. Okay. That, that's like a, a tactical roadmap. You know, tactical roadmaps are their guess. Now in ETH, there is this blue line here, which you might not be able to see, but certain kinds of DeMarc work call this a magnet price. And it kind of explains why my GAN price at 1950 isn't working. Normally that price should get hit, the market should just go. So it's good that that's not happening, but it may be because 1916 is a magnet price, meaning every time it goes down there, right? It either bounces off for it or when it goes below it, like here, it just comes back. Okay. It's actually tried to test this level a couple of times. It's interesting. Okay. So I don't know if you can get all negative ETH until it's below 1916. In the meantime, it may be a 1960 to 2000 range that is so mind numbingly boring 
You either get chopped up or you give up. Okay. I don't recommend either. Just as a reminder, ETH on the monthly chart, right, shows a 13 top for April, which, you know, there are some people out there. I got a note yesterday that I helped save some kid's college fund. It's nice. Okay. That 13 top in April should lead to five more down months. That's May, June, July, August, September. Based on what this read looks like. I know that's not what anybody wants to hear, but so far this is working and you know, it's old fashioned American football. You run the play until they stop it or it doesn't work anymore. ETH on a four hour chart. Keep in mind, we're looking for a wave five down. Meaning if 1960, 1916 does eventually break, the ensuing sell-off could be very emotional because five waves are emotional. Now, where does this move start from? I don't know. But when they do get started, they are powerful. Okay. In Bitcoin, we're waiting for the start of wave three. Those can be very what they call impulsive which means once they start, right, you get a lot of gratification on the downside or a lot of pain on the downside if you're long because you can't get the bounce to get out. So during this boredom phase, right, is when you should be adjusting risk. Okay, just look at my view count on YouTube, right? The market blows up. I get a ton of views. Appreciate everybody who watched. Then the market just goes quiet. And when the, the 20,000 people should be here getting ready, they're not here. You are, and we thank you. Anybody who's watching live or the recorded video, please subscribe to our channel. So you want to get ready for a wave three when you're bored out of your mind in wave two. Because once wave three starts, it gets difficult, right? My guess is with the way these things work is that, you know, if people are expecting a down move, what may happen is there could be a squeeze. Like on June 7th, there's like some regulatory announcement is going to come out maybe. There could be this final squeeze up and then down. Like the bigger the squeeze, the bigger the ensuing down move. I don't know. Again, applying the crystal ball to interj charts is difficult. But if you get the squeeze, that's your opportunity if you're a short seller or if you're looking to reduce risk. Okay, Ethereum futures funding rates. Over here, it's all green. Just like it was over here right before ETH fell out of bed and it went all red. Okay, so what is everybody, what is up with this? Well, you know what? Just before the show, I was like, I know what's up with this. The ETH merge is coming out and hedge funds are like, okay, well, maybe we'll have to get short some stuff like altcoins or Bitcoin, but... We got to have something on in case this ETH merge comes out and the market moves. So it makes sense that they would want to add perpetual futures because theoretically they might be able to add leverage to that if ETH went up. That's actually not a bad strategy. It's not, right? I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen for sure, but we do know that the ETH merge is the equivalent of three Bitcoin halvings. We just don't know if they're going to be able to execute it when they say they're going to execute it in August, which is the month before Rectember. Just a small note there. So I get it that they want to be long ETH in case it goes up. All right. But what happens if ETH doesn't go up? That means all these levered players have to sell the thing that's the treasured thing to own, which is very typical, right? The thing that is the diamond that like Amazon in 2002, everybody gives up on it right before it's time to buy it. So I'm not being negative Nelly. I hope ETH moves. I hope ETH saves the whole market because frankly, ETH is the only thing that can save this market in my opinion. Okay, let's talk about DeFi and Aave. We started talking about this yesterday by a request from a very smart person, all right? Uh, this is the token metrics quant support resistance levels. By the way, I have more of this and I have altcoin overtime. 
right, as well, right, small cap stuff, okay, here's a hint. There's something going on in stable coins that our AI has picked up. So there's no way you're going to want to go anywhere, okay, don't go anywhere. Okay, so Abe has an inflection point at 96. And as you can see, there isn't much below 96. Our quant guys are going to have to compute, recompute. Okay, if Abe fails and it goes below 96, the whole DeFi complex could be in trouble. Okay, yesterday we discussed that Abe, according to the DeMarc work on the four hour chart, very simply, right? Corrections, they used to call them zigzags, right? A, B, C. Now in the DeMarc world, because this helps take the subjectivity out of it, we go A, B, C, and then sometimes that C wave is tricky. Maybe some of you have heard me say that before. C waves are just, they're so annoying, right? Because you know the big move's coming. You know we're about to transition, but you can't figure it out. Well, the DeMarc work put a zero in. So if it's A, B, C, zero, that means the DeMarc work thinks that's the end of the correction. That's it. So that's right. And Ave falls below 96, then Ave is going to go down. Now, if not, then Ave is defying all kinds of gravity, support at 96 is holding, and that's good. So, but that, that point at 96 in Ave, to me, could be the most important thing in altcoins next to 1916 in ETH. Just a reminder, long bond futures, right? Uh, economy weak, Fed tightening to fight inflation. Paradise for long bonds. Now this could hold up crypto. Long bonds up rates down, positive for crypto. So this could be something, if like there was one thing I could say, is like, all right, Bill, other than the ETH merge happening tomorrow, What's the biggest macro thing that could help crypto? Higher bond prices and lower rates. Housing fell out of bed. Like Kathy Jones of Schwab said, home sales come in much below expectations. 591,000 versus 763 last month, down 16%. She goes, oof. So economy slower, okay? Interest rates, a little lower. So will the Fed continue to fight inflation or is it too late? Stay tuned. Okay, quant open interest. So everybody, here we go. Quant support and resistance, machine learning based support and resistance levels. How are we going to trade it? 28,300 is support in Bitcoin. Okay, and that support is holding for a while. Now, I think this is one of three scenarios. It either just sits here because this listless price action can be like bacteria in a Petri dish, right? Like high volatility can breed itself, right? Like, you know, when it starts getting wild, it just keeps staying wild. Or when it shuts down, it can continue to shut down and just sit there, right? In which case, I can probably take a little vacation. Now, the other thing it can do, right, is it can just waterfall off a cliff, right? So it's like down, sit here, and it's the bowling ball out of a building formation, and it just goes, whoop. I'll show you another chart where Matic was doing this. So it just sits here and then just goes dup, down, down to 24 and then beyond. Or scenario three, there's a spike. Okay, so everyone gets short, everyone's all hedged up, and then boom, something squeezes everybody to either 31 or, oh my God, 33. That would, that would just kill everybody. What I was saying earlier to our private group is that my experience with big moves, like I was in the bond market crash of 94, and I remember very distinctly that there was a move like rates went massively higher, but right before they did that, they just shot lower. So it was, okay, we're sitting here. Something might happen. Gee, I don't know. And then all of a sudden rates went down. 
And they're like, okay, everything's fine. And then rates just went straight up until a U.S. municipality blew up from owning the wrong type of bonds. It lasted all year. I was on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade for the 8% long bond. 30-year mortgage, not the 30-year mortgage rate, the 30-year bond rate was 8%, which probably gave you a double-digit 30-year mortgage rate. Okay, so in this case, if there's going to be a big down move, you may get a squeeze before that, in which case you're going to want to know where resistance is. Okay, I think there's a lot of people who are going to buy Bitcoin at 24. That may work initially. But I think the most important thing to know is where is resistance? Because if there is a squeeze before, you know, this move possibly starts in June, that's where you're going to want to get out. Now let's talk about ETH. Okay, here's the good news about ETH. Um, as you go down, their ETH is very well supported. So, you know, yeah, it can move from 2200 to 2042. And if it can't get above 2042, the next level is 1750. And then the level below that is 1566. But as you can see by all these lines below the price of ETH, it's not like there's nothing there. Like we have done this before. I think it was Solana. There was just nothing there. Just a big air pocket. So on the way down, even though, you know, I don't know, there's like, you know, 10% between these levels. It's not like there's no support in ETH. There is support in ETH. So, but if ETH is not above 2042, then, you know, risk is to 1752. Now, speaking of air pockets, yikes. Near protocol, 545. And underneath that is 395. Yikes. So near protocol is holding. There has been a bid here. All right. But if it doesn't hold, it's going to go below four. Okay. This just shows you what can happen to some of these altcoins. Now, there is some good news in Solana. Okay. Solana has good support at 48. Solana also has report support at 37, 29, and 19. So that's a rather huge range. But that was the range that Solana was in before it moved. So I would imagine that there is somebody out there going, you know what? If Solana goes to 48, I'm going to start the DCA down to 19 and hope it doesn't go to a dollar. Right? In other words, you want to start the DCA maybe when it gets in the middle of some of these ranges or maybe just at the top. Right? Now, hopefully you're not DCAing at one, but you want to start small. But it is interesting that Solana is almost back to kind of home where it started from. Now, Avalanche. Okay. <laughs> Avalanche is a little bit of a different story. So 39 is resistance. It doesn't seem to want to go up there. 24 is support. It doesn't seem to want to go below that. But if it does, I mean, there's three support levels, four support, three support levels in Avalanche. Ready? 24, 14, and three and a half. So this is like the best of the best. And if this could vaporize, like the difference between this chart and ETH, like ETH is supported like, you know, at every, you know, $150. But this is like 24 to 14 to three. Matic. Okay, so this is an example of this like waterfall process where it comes to resistance at 1.7. Cracks a level, sits on the next one, tries to go up, fails, water falls lower, tries to come back up to the other resistance, fails, water falls lower, and then just sits here at 62 cents. So this just kind of looks like it just wants to just keep getting pushed off. The bowling ball falls out of a window. Now there's good support at 50 cents, and I don't think there's any fundamental reason to hate Matic at this level, but this type of price action where you get dump and sit is a recipe for more dump and sit.
because that's what happened with Matic. And even if it's dump, sit, spike, it hits resistance and then boom. Right. All of these bear market rallies here, man, they got sold immediately. So if you get bear market rallies and you get one final spike, you may have to wait 10 days. But if you get it, use it. Okay, Cardano. Resistance at 60. That's over here. The big support's at 39, and below that, it's 28. So Cardano is a, entering an area between 39 and 15. This is where it was before it took off. So, you know, if they can't take it above 60, then most likely you're going to get some sort of opportunity between 40 cents and 14 cents. Okay, but let's just stick with 39 is support, 60 is resistance. Now, XRP, I didn't label this one. 36 cents is support for XRP, resistance at 47, and it's annoying because it's sitting right in the middle. Okay, so I think if XRP is below 36 cents, you got a problem with the government. It's that simple, right? I don't think there's much of a rationale after this kind of give up trade right? Big YouTubers are into this. People just completely quit, right? And went from a dollar to like, you know, 40 cents, 47 cents. So if there's any more selling from here, it's probably because there's something wrong. Now, speaking of something is wrong. Wow. People are buying Monero. Holy cow. 123 held his support. This thing ripped through two resistance points and it's pushing 200. At last I looked. The next level is 226. Now, this is one of two things, right? You have to be where the failed rally, obviously, right? Or you have to be careful that this thing doesn't go crazy parabolic before any potential down move starts. In other words, I know this is crazy, but do you remember ApeCoin mooning hard right before this market crashed, ApeCoin went from like 10 or 12 to 28, I think. And then ApeCoin crashed and then the market crashed. I'm wondering if this is the new ApeCoin or this is the new thing that people think that they're safe in. Now they might be, I, I don't know. But someone's buying this and the trend is your friend until it's not. If it's above 200, 226 is next. Now let's talk about Maker. Maker, their support at 1214. And if it doesn't hold, the next level I have is 579. The token metrics grading system is showing that there is a lot of weakness in DeFi. Feel free to check that out at tokenmetrics.com. Our director of research pointed that out in today's premium webinar. Here is hidden pivot resistance in Maker, right? 1520 is resistance, 539 is support. Oh, God. Now, let's talk about Tether. I know. Nobody wants to hear any more Tether FUD, but it's not Tether FUD. It's not. Okay. So we do some Fib Circle analysis, right? We connect May of 2021. That's supposed to be January of 2022. Okay. But Tether market cap hits a fifth circle level and it's gone down since we showed it last time. Tether dominance did a little bit more fifth circle analysis. And man, that is right at a key level at 5.82. So is Tether in trouble? Is it in trouble? Well, I don't know. But token metrics AI is telling us something really, really interesting about stable coins. So let me introduce everybody to altcoin overtime. Now, let me see if I can go through this. Uh, there is, this is what we do. We, we're looking for small coins. So we've had this theory, right, that... The best reason to have a platform like token metrics, other than the fact that I work there is that it can help you find really small coins 
because the future of crypto is going to be in really small coins or in things that haven't even been invented yet. So that the market goes down, if you're watching the small, small, small coins, you might be able to find something that's the future or get a signal that's meaningful. So crypto holding with 25 Twitter followers is a stable coin pegged one-to-one -one with the Swiss franc that runs on the ETH blockchain. Okay. Let me see if I can find the chart over here. Okay, it's CHFT, so crypto holding franc token. Now, obviously, there's nothing going on on the trading view because it's a stable coin, but it is trading over a dollar, and the Swiss franc is a traditional safe haven. Okay. And then there is Stratus XSDG. So what is Stratus? Well, it's a stable coin pegged to another safe haven country, Singapore. A stable coin pegged to the Singapore dollar running on Ethereum and Silica. Huh. So our AI is picking up stable coins. Okay. Now, this one actually trades pretty low. Okay. Or I don't know if it's low or not, but... It's been on the rise and our AI is picking up on stable coins denominated in safe haven fiat currencies. Do I think that's interesting? Oh, hell yes, I think that's interesting. So rather than do tether FUD, which no one wants to hear, I get that, okay? No one wants to hear tether FUD. How about we do something different. We say, well, maybe the system is looking for alternatives because if Bitcoin could go down and altcoins could go down and avalanche could go down and no one trusts Tether, where are you going? Well, maybe there's something new out there. Maybe there's something that pops up and goes, Hey, right? Like there's going to be something that goes up no matter how hard the market does or doesn't go down. There's always something. There's a bull market somewhere. That's what Kramer says. He's right. There's always a bull market somewhere. Now, speaking of bull markets, the $64 question is, when's the bottom? Like, when bottom? Okay, good question. Markets love symmetry. This is the token metrics market page. And believe it or not, this seems to be the most popular indicator. So you can see the red and the green shading, right? See the red and green shading. So those are our total crypto market cap buy and sell signals. So, you know, if it's when it goes from green to red sell, when it goes from, you know, red to green buy, right? Not investment advice, but I noticed something. So this green line over here, okay. The green line is total altcoin market cap. And the yellow line is Bitcoin market cap. Now, the white line is total market cap. We're not going to look at that right now. We're going to look at the fact that in May of 2021, altcoin market cap, as we calculated, was $1.5 trillion, and Bitcoin market cap was $1.1 trillion. So once upon a time, back in May of 2021, in the heady days of Bitcoin Miami, et cetera, altcoins were actually worth more than Bitcoin. So since markets love symmetry, doesn't it stand to reason that if you had that unbelievable FOMO event, which you haven't seen since, that in order for the market to bottom, altcoin market cap, the green line, would actually be below Bitcoin market cap. In other words, the extreme over here on the upside would be matched by an extreme over here on the downside. So what does that mean? Well, here's what it means. It means ETH may be the only altcoin that survives. <laughs> Everyone's tried to kill ETH, and I'm wondering if ETH can kill everything else. Possibly even Bitcoin. Just saying. Just an idea. In research, you get paid for imagination. So if you come up with an idea and everybody goes, oh, that sounds good, it's probably not going to work. If you come up with an idea and people go, oh, you're insane, you're insane. 
It might work. It might. Okay. In research, you get paid for imagination. Obviously, you want to stick with token metrics and you want to check out altcoin over time with us because we found two stable coins for Swiss franc and Singapore. And I, I am hard pressed to figure out how anybody would figure that out without our site. No joke. This was our site and an analyst. You can only get that here on this YouTube channel. Okay, so that is altcoin overtime. Now, let's see what we got going on in the chat. Let's check it out. Okay, what's up in the chat? What's up? Gotsman said, stable coins are not stable. Bob Harsh said, step in unsustainable yields. Um, I think we're moving over to Honey Badger, right? Okay. Bill, you think the ETH merge still going to pull us out of the bear market? Um, yes, when they execute it. They say it's August. I wouldn't be shocked if it was November. It's just saying. Okay, but yes. I mean, the whole crypto market is in the hands of Vitalik. I, that's not a, that's, I'm not even, that's not even a little bit of a joke. He executes the ETH merge tomorrow. Oh, I'm buying a green shirt <laughs> with like funny little ETH logos on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, that guy holds crypto in his hands. They cannot execute in August. Look no further as to how you get rectangle. Okay. Um, Pat says, I'm going to pick up some miners when the market is down. Okay. I don't disagree. Okay. What I, what I want to tell you is, is that people say, I want to buy when it's down. Like I remember during the bull market, people would come on and go, oh, I can't wait for the bear market so I can buy. Market's just going up and up. I can't wait for the bear market so I can buy. Most of the guys who are saying that, they're gone. I don't hear from them. They disappeared. Don't root for a bear market. Now, if you want to buy it when it's down, that actually requires some level of mental clarity. You want to, you want to be clear in your head, right? So you can't, it's tough to buy when you're totally wrecked. It's one thing if you just want to let long-term positions or moon bags, you know, fluctuate and that doesn't mess up your head. But if this thing is down, Okay, it'll be so down, you won't want to buy even though you do or want to or should. Or God forbid there's a liquidity problem and you can't buy. Okay, that's another thing I'm telling people. Okay. Okay, XMR equals dark web sales increasing. Okay, that's interesting. Shreko says, privacy summer. Why didn't I think of that? Sounds good, right? Bob Harsh said, Stepin is done, okay? College fund, way to go from Method Yoga. Yes, that definitely picks up morale when you're helping somebody. Crypto Multiplier is saying ETH 700, okay? Um, Zcash using Kraken data. I did look at Zcash. It's sitting on support, but obviously it's not doing, it's not doing what Monero is doing, right? It's not. Okay. Spin says near ouch. I agree. Right. Okay. Bob Marsh also says if Bitcoin doesn't play, nobody plays. Nobody plays. Okay. Crypto multiplier also says if there's a relief rally, it's a great opportunity to wait it out. So this is a great point. Most people are asking me about a relief rally. What's a relief rally? Well, the market goes down a lot and then you go, oh, it's going up. Oh, thank God. I don't have to pay attention now. I don't have to worry. I have relief. I feel good. Remember I told you about bear markets? Can you stand in front of a bear and go, 
oh, look, it's a giant bear. But the sun is shining and the daffodils are beautiful and the stream is running and the giant bear is standing there and he's not happy. <laughs> okay. So relief rallies normally come after the bear has gotten very angry, right? Normally relief means an absence of selling. And the market like levitates up. There's so many people looking for relief that you may not get it. There's so many people who want relief, you may not get it. Now, I know that sounds super mean. And people who make money in bear markets are generally super aggressive, mean people, right? Every time it looks good, they sell. Every time somebody says, oh, Oh, thank God I'm safe. Like in the, in the horror movies, right? Like in Jaws. Oh, it's over. No, it's not over. It may not be, right? Even if there is a relief rally, that's even more reason to pay attention, okay? Because that could be the opportunity to get out. Maybe it's a breakout. That would be awesome. But if it's not, right? When, when everyone is relieved, you should be focused, okay? When everybody is panicking, you should be calm. Okay. When everybody says I'm not doing crypto ever again, you want to borrow money to get crypto, right? Just, you know, it's, the, it's a way to keep your head in shape. Like the treadmill keeps your body in shape. Okay. Somebody says CPI is worse than monkeypox. So let's talk about monkeypox, right? <laughs> you know, markets love bad news. Bad news keeps the Fed away. Is our monkeypox the friend of crypto? Well, COVID helped crypto because the Fed had to print money. So is the Fed going to print money so they're going to stop tightening, stop pulling money out of the system and go, oh, a loaf of bread's $12? Oh, who cares? Let's stop tightening and print money. Okay. Okay. Maybe if it gets bad enough, right? But when everybody starts talking about, oh, hey, monkeypox, cool. Dude, it's a disease. Come on. You know, people are getting desperate. It's like, oh, the stock market's going to go up. Monkeypox, just like COVID, right? Okay. Hope is not a tactic, right? And diseases are not bullish always, right? COVID was an exception. You got something that slows the economy down and the world runs out of wheat and oil goes to 160. That is not exactly a friendly environment for risk assets. So yeah, monkeypox is out there and that could slow down the Fed. I get it. But that may help bonds more than it may help risk assets. Okay. Spin says Davos and midterm election chaos going to pop soon, $10 gas here on the West Coast. Yeah, folks, it's not, it's not funny what's going on out there, okay? Um, seriously. Nature Levi said that's one reason NFTs went up, COVID, clap, COVID cash sloshing, sloshing around. And then Unknown Revolver says the ETH merge could unlock 14 million ETH and it might dump. Well, that's the first I've heard of that. Let me go back to the token metrics analytics team to find out if that's true or not. Okay. Bill, do ETH merge rallies to 8K or 10K? All right. So let's talk about, let's talk about cowboy upside in ETH. Why not? Cowboy upside in ETH only occurs if the dollar dumps. We have some very clear statistical analysis done last year, okay? ETH goes up when the dollar goes down. So if you had a recession, if monkeypox wrecked the U.S. economy, if there was a geopolitical event, whatever would cause the dollar to dump, like everybody having to buy rubles to buy gas, if something caused the dollar to dump, ETH would move. Now, my guess, as I've talked about earlier, my guess is that ETH would go down. And a lot of times, all the panic selling occurs right as the big fundamental event looms, right? 
So everyone's all down on the market. You know, I don't know. They mess up the ETH merge. Everyone sells ETH. And that's right at the point where, say, the merge is going to get done soon. And then the dollar's going to dump. And everyone will be selling ETH at whatever price. And then the next thing you know, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to 10x. But normally before you get to 10x, everyone gives up. Just as a, a point. I was on live streams with Ian Bellina way back in the day. Ian Bellina was like, Matic, 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 Matic. <laughs> okay? Matic went up 50% and crashed twice before that thing actually 100 x so if it's going to 100x or 10x, it's going to shake you out first. Like crypto Twitter calls it face-melting volatility. Okay? Face-melting volatility. So speaking of face-melting volatility, I'm going to go way outside the box for anybody who's stuck around. Okay? So this is, I'm going to take my turn at theater. So I've been presenting my case for like an event that I want everybody to be ready for. And I presented it a couple times to fairly sophisticated audiences. And the first question always is, gee, Bill, that's a good presentation. Uh, but should I reduce risk? Should I sell some of my holdings? And I'm like, dude, did you, did you not hear me say 1929 a couple times? Did you not? Did you miss that part? No, it, he didn't. Well, these people didn't. It, it doesn't register. It doesn't register. Okay? Some sort of event like that happening is not believable. Well, it should be because the market, you know, Bitcoin and equities are down like six, seven, eight weeks in a row. And our analysis indicates that, you know, that could trigger a problem. And we've talked about it. And I don't want to beat it to death. But well, this is what I want you to know. What am I doing here? What's my job? My job is to help them protect you. And in like the military, they call it, you know, they call it people who protect others. They call them sheepdogs, right? And there is actually something called the prayer of the sheepdog. So for today's conclusion, I want to try to try to read some of the prayer of the sheepdog, corny or not, right? Because whatever I tell you, whatever charts I show you, maybe that doesn't matter. But what does matter is I do all those charts because I care about protecting token metrics clients and token metrics viewers, whether that's four, 4,000 or 4 million, right? So here are excerpts from the prayer of the sheepdog. The knights of old were men of honor who used, to, who used their might for right. Today, they're known as sheepdogs, those that carry on the fight. I am a tired old sheepdog, the guardian of my flock. I keep the predators at bay and stand watch around the clock. I am proud to be a sheepdog. I've done my very best. I'll stand my watch until my maker calls me home to rest. Help us bring the age of sheep to a rapid end, then fill this land with sheepdogs, men of honor, once again. Okay, two points. Don't be a sheep. And if you need a sheepdog, I'm here for you. That's the market update, folks. I appreciate all you being here. I will see you tomorrow.